Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of my Intro to Twine series. In this series, I'm going to cover debugging. In the past few weeks, I've been receiving messages from various watchers of the series with some issues that they've been having in their own stories. And I thought it might be helpful for me to give, pass on some debugging techniques that will make working with your stories easier and to figure out some problems that you may run into. So here we are, we're back to the derelict story once again. And for the most part, we're pretty much wrapped up with it on an instructional level. But there is an error so far. Here, if I come to my living quarters, we can see that here we have a bunch of code. And if I run this game, I'm going to run into an error. The question is, how do we solve this error? In cases like this, I don't really like to debug in the twine window. It's a little bit, there's just too much code and it's really hard to decipher. What I like to do is switch over to a text editor and use white, white space in tabs to help me debug an issue. I'm going to copy this paragraph here and I'm going to switch over to my text editor. From here, I'm just going to paste everything in. I, this still doesn't help at all. You can't really see the error. But what I can do now is I can use each if statement as its own line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit enter here. And now in between these two braces, I'm just going to put these on a separate line. If there's anything between these, I'm going to put use tabs and tab that over. Since this is an else statement, I'm going to move this on its separate line and I'm going to move this brace over here. Now I'll continue moving over. Now that I'm in this else statement, I'm going to move this tab this over and then put this on a separate line. And I'm going to keep doing this until my text is nice and visual, visual so I can see exactly what's going on. Right away by doing this, you, sh you should be able to spot this error. Here we have an else statement, and we don't have an appropriate brace to move this to tab this out. Since this is being pushed right against the side, this is a visual indicator that we're missing a brace. What I can do now is simply just put another brace here, and then tab this over. This makes it easier to see exactly what's wrong with your code at a glance. And then when you're done, you can compress it again and just save it right back into Twine's interface. Another problem that people tend to have is when they run into syntax errors. Syntax errors is when you make a simple typo. For instance, you instead of putting if, you might put ig or something like that. Or instead of putting inventory, you may add in a separate line. The thing to know is when you run into these things, sometimes Twine will let you know that there's an error, but sometimes it won't. And what you have to do is do a little detective work. The thing to keep in mind is that when you do run into errors, it's rarely rare that Twine is the cause of the errors, meaning it's the Twine framework that's broken and it's, your, it's incorrectly interpreting your code. What you should do is first look at your code and find, try to find out where it might have the error. The way I do this is I simply try to recreate that section of code on a Twine page. Once I have it working, my new section of code, I then compare it to my old section of code. Another thing I find helpful is I like to compare lines by line by line. I like to compare things, excuse me, word by word, and then I can at a glance see if there's anything wrong or anything broken and so forth. When you do run into a problem and you ruled out it's not your code, then my next suggestion is to find outside help. To do that, I highly suggest you head over to twinery.org. Here you'll see a link to the forms. In these forms, there are going to be a whole bunch of Twine experts who hang out and talk shop and so forth, and that they're willing to help you out with any problems. But here's the thing, you should use these guys as a last resort instead of a first resort. What you want to do is go in, do your homework, do your investigation, and when you've ruled out or when you, if you haven't been able to solve the problem, then 
Then what you can do is come over to the forms, write a post, and politely ask for assistance. Make sure your subject line is accurate, and then write down your problem and follow it by some code samples. You may want to put some, some hints or some hypotheses you might have of the issue, but generally speaking, if you provide enough information and a code sample, someone may be able to come along, see what, what's going on, and be able to fix it or tell you how to fix it at a glance. When someone does answer your problem, the next thing I suggest you do is make sure to thank that person. That's just good manners anyhow because they're donating their time, but also let them know if that worked or not. If it worked, the last thing you want to do is just leave that person hanging or leave that thread hanging. And the reason for that is because someone else may come along and have that very same issue. And by going through forms and seeing that that solution may have worked, it may help other people as well. So it helps everyone in the long run just by being polite.